heard that you were at the truck stop and you got some chest pain. What's going on with that? Gosh, I was just driving up the interstate and uh, started to experience some chest pain. The students love the simulation lab and so do the faculty. We really enjoy the opportunity to work this way with the students. When they first come in, they're a little bit intimidated about talking to a plastic man, as they often describe it. But once they get going in their scenarios, it just seems to go away and they respond as though they're caring for a patient. They often times will get to practice doing things that either they may never see in their clinical setting or that they may expect to see. And they like being able to sort of be put through their paces so that they can see how they would respond in a situation. I very much enjoyed being able to practice my skills on someone that I couldn't actually kill. <laughs> and it gave me a chance to see just how much I actually knew in an under pressure situation because you're really nervous when you go in having people stare at you. and. Um, you know, you get to practice the skills in an emergency type situation that you wouldn't necessarily get to practice in clinical because those situations don't always arise. So it, it helped me see just how prepared I am to be a nurse. I think this type of program or simulator would be good for hospitals because it would, you know, allow like especially emergency response teams, you know, de-escalation teams, that type of thing to have in services and be able to practice this the simulation lab is a wonderful place for students to learn. It's a place where they can come and they can practice their skills and they can put their theory that they're learning in the classroom into practice in a very safe environment. It's a place where they can make a mistake and we can actually let that mistake sort of come to its conclusion and talk about it without putting any patients at risk. They learn to communicate not only with other disciplines, but also when they're planning the care for their patient, they learn to, they need to often call to get orders, so they get to practice those skills. Oftentimes these students are in a scenario with three or four of them working together. So there are all kinds of team building responsibilities for those, those students, which is excellent. And they also very much like getting immediate feedback from faculty when they've had a scenario that they've gone through. Then at the end of the scenario, we talk about the decisions they've made, the skills that they have performed, and they have a chance to sort of review and analyze what they've done. It's about as realistic as you can get without actually working with uh, live patients. Um, from the Army standpoint, it was, it was great to be able to push forward um, combat-like scenarios to first-line medical care, uh, both medics, nurses, mid-level providers such as NPs and PAs, and actually get them to do some hands-on sort of uh, simulated but realistic training with the, with the sim men and with medi men. You can check the effectiveness of someone's CPR. You can administer meds like you would in a combat scenario, uh, four milligrams of morphine sulfate, and see what it does to the patient's respirations, see what it does to their blood pressure, see what it does to their heart rate, and, and make the adequate interventions from there. Um, the, the wounds bleed, the patient can talk to you. All that was akin to what they'd experience with a real patient uh, in, in a combat theater of operations, albeit without all the noise, smoke, and uh, accessory gunfire, if you will. And to not provide our, our mid-level providers, our first responders, in both the military and the civilian side, with the realistic training that we can provide them, to not do that, we're really doing a disservice to both the student being educated as well as the, uh, the potential patients that they're going to interact with someday.